Hello YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Gonna Change. Today I want to talk about the LeBron James I Promise. Um, and just get into that a little bit and I'll give my opinion on it. Let's first look at this. Several years ago, NBA uh, all-time great LeBron James embarked on a noble philanthropic philanthropic <laughs> journey by aiming to transform the lives of at-risk students and parents in the hometown of Akron. The I Promise uh, the I Promise School opened up in 2018 as a part of the Akron public school system, but multiple years have gone by since the school's fall, since the school's fall class of the eighth grade students produced passing scores for the Ohio's math test, according to the report from the Akron Beacon. Now, I'm sure you guys have already seen videos on this, so let me go ahead and explain a little bit further. So what pretty much is what has happened is people saying LeBron James's school is still failing. Now, a lot of these kids are obviously minors. Uh, minors <laughs> obviously uh the minority uh, these are normally more black children more brown children and so some people are saying wow lebron your school is completely failing i thought it was this and i thought it was that and i just thought that you would do better than that i want to say something right quick i want to read something else to you guys okay <clears throat> this is just oh worldwide i mean national right Math, math and reading scores among the Americans' 13-year-olds fell to their lowest level in decades, with math scores plunging by the largest margin ever recorded according to the results of the federal test known as the National Report Card. If you continue down, <clears throat> in the national sample, 13-year-olds' average math scores fell by 9 points between 2020 and 2023. Reading scores fell by 4 points. Uh, and the test formerly called the National Assessment Education Progress was administered from October to December, right? <clears throat> if we go down here, going by race, especially alarming officials were outside the decreases, lowest performing students. Students at all achievements saw decreases, but while stronger students saw slides from six to eight points, lower uh, performing students saw decreases from 12. So um, it was um, a Hispanic. Here we go. Here it is. But the steepest drops were among American Indian students at 20 points, black students 13 points to the climb for white students with six points, and while Asians stayed held even. Held even. Listen, I can understand people making fun of LeBron and making fun of his school and saying, "Oh, it's a shame." I thought it was because white supremacy and all that kind of stuff. I've been reading. I've been listening. And people will say that, you know, his school is failing. It's not. And it has nothing to do with white supremacy, which is what people say that the whole school is founded upon, is that black kids don't succeed because they're uh, because of white supremacy or they don't succeed because they don't they're not given the same opportunities. Right. And there is an argument to say that some black kids aren't going to make it because of the culture they have at home. Right. But I do want to say this to say that I promise is doing that much worse. I understand they have not had one student pass at all. Not one student has passed. The, uh, the statewide test to be able to, you know, that would normally let them move forward, right? So all these kids are failing. Here's the thing. Scores have been dropping for a while. In fact, y'all know that I tutor in the math department, right? And so even where I work, and I work at a predominantly white school, I've worked at a Hispanic school, I've worked at all black school, well, all black, predominantly Hispanic, predominantly black, predominantly white. I worked at all these schools, Right? But right now, I'm working at a predominantly white school. And I can tell you right now, the math scores are not good. Math scores everywhere are not doing well. So to think that a school, as I promised, that started only five years ago, is supposed to be somehow better than these other schools that are up there, that schools that have been schools for hundreds of years, or maybe not hundreds, but 100 years. Uh, in fact, my school has been a school for about 100 years. It's just crazy to me that people are like, man, they expect that the I Promise is supposed to be above and beyond. Of course, the people at I Promise, you know LeBron. I love him as a basketball player. I don't love him as a person. He tends to just overdo stuff, right? He just kind of thinks, because he's so gifted athletically, he thinks that he's also gifted intellectually. He's gifted in everything he does, and it's just not true. Yes, he's a billionaire, but that's because he has a great team around him, and he does make great business decisions, but that doesn't mean he knows everything. And so him and everybody who started this, I promise, including the people who live in Ohio, they were thinking that this school was going to excel, that these black kids were going to go in there and they're going to be the smartest kids ever. And then they were going to make a news report saying, I told you, black kids are smarter than white kids and they, they were going to go do all this. Unfortunately, it didn't work that way. But I'm not blaming the school. I'm blaming the expectations. Right. Because, like I said, or we just read, test scores are falling everywhere. Everywhere. So it's not just an I promise thing. 
So to think that this school was going to step in and with five years, these kids were going to be above and beyond. No, <laughs> no. And I can tell you from working with sped kids as well. Obviously, I, I tutor in math, so obviously I tutor some special ed kids. And I've been working with special ed kids for a very long time. OK, I've been working with children for 19. Now, here's my 20th year. Here's the thing. It takes a while for a kid to go from being below average or below standards to excelling in the standards. In fact, I want to tell you that a lot of the students that I've tutored, I haven't seen necessarily one go from being below to just above and beyond. They normally go from below and then it takes about three, four years to just get them on par with the rest of the students in their classes. If you've ever been in special ed, or if you've ever worked in special ed, you know that most special ed kids stay in special ed almost all the way through high school. It, it normally doesn't change that quickly. You don't have a kid who's in special ed from third grade and then never be in special ed ever again. No, they normally go from third grade and then you'll see them in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh. It just keeps going. So it's not that crazy that these kids who are already below average, I, you shouldn't expect them to just excel. And I think that's where the I promise made a mistake. They thought that if they pushed this narrative, that if, you know, maybe if we put these kids with some money, we put them in a place where we know they can succeed, have give them everything they need, give them high, uh, give them the best state of the art technology that they'll succeed. No, <laughs> no. When it comes to students and kids, I'll tell you the kids that tend to excel more. It is they're either the kids that work exceptionally hard right? These are the kids that you'll always find trying to give their best, not always going to have the greatest day, but they'll always try to give their best. But the, the students that tend to do better are students, parents who are involved, right? When the parents are involved, the students tend to do better. Every kid that I have that has a bad home life in his, uh, like once again, right now I work at a predominantly white school. So yes, white people can have a bad home life. Uh, don't get it confused. Uh, with the kids that I see that have a worse home life, they tend to just, they tend to not move forward very well. They tend to keep, they tend to regress during the summers. And then when they get back to school, they're right back below average again. And you got to have to work it up again. And that's another thing that happens with these kids. These kids that they, they're saying that aren't even passing reading or anything that they are promise. It's because when those summers hit, they regress. They go right back to whatever home life they got. And then they come back to school and they're right back below average. So, of course, you spend every single year just trying to get the kids to meet their goals. And meeting their goals does not mean being on par with other students. When a kid comes in academically and they're trying to uh, and they come into a special education program or they, they come in below average, your goal as a teacher or a paraprofessional or a tutor is to try to get them to meet a certain academic goal for them, right? I'm sure you guys have I IEPs, right? You try to get these kids just to get to a goal for them. They're specific, individualized programs. And so when you try to get those kids there, that doesn't mean they're going to reach on par. And that's what you're seeing at I Promise. The kids are doing well getting to their goals, but the, but the problem is they're not getting to the state goals. And that's also happening nationwide. You have a lot of kids who are getting better, but they're not getting to the state goal. Obviously, there's a lot of factors of why kids are not doing well. But I just don't think that you can make fun of the I Promise school because kids were already not doing well far before I Promise. I Promise took kids that weren't doing well already and tried to make them into scholars. And that's very difficult to do. That is extremely difficult to do, actually. To so take a kid who was way below average even lebron said it himself in that interview not too long ago you take a kid who is at the very bottom and expect them to go from very bottom to the top of their class no <laughs> no especially go from the bottom of their school or bottom of their academics and to go from that to the top of the state no no you don't go from the very bottom then be the top kid in the entire state so I understand people are say, maybe upset with LeBron or they want to make this about race and all that stuff. It really doesn't. It, what really matters is where these kids come from. If their parents aren't involved and their parents aren't really helping these kids along, they're going to tend to continue to fail. Right. 
And I hate saying that because I don't want the people to think that if you just academically fail in a school that you're a failure. That's not true. These kids aren't failures, but they do go back home and they might not have the greatest home life. And some of these kids, they just don't want to try. In fact, let me tell you a quick little story. Guess who graduated at the bottom of their class? Me. <laughs> I graduated with a 1.97 GPA. 1.97. Bottom. That's that's failing. If you got that in college, you'd be suspended and kicked out. I went from that to being in college and honors college. Right? But the point is, is I was not a failure because I was dumb. I'm a stupid. My life and what I was going through as a child made it really hard for me to do anything academically. I was a black kid at an all white school. I was fat. I was short. Well, short, I, nothing I could do about being black, nothing I could do about being, being overweight. I could do something about, but had an addiction to food. It was my only comfort at the time. I was a kid. We all make mistakes as kids. And so I lived that life, a complete failure, right? Or so I thought. But as soon as I got the opportunity and I grew up a little bit and I got in college, I did well. But at the same time, you don't have to go to college and do well. I just don't want these kids seeing the news that they're pretty much failures because these kids are going to see this eventually and think that because academically they're not at the top of their state. Oh, this, the failure, the school's a failure. It's just wild to me. All schools are not doing well. A lot of kids are dropping in math and reading. It's just not doing well at this point. It's the lowest we've seen in decades. 2004 for reading, 1990 for uh, math. It's been a long time since we've been doing well in math. So it just is what it is. So I don't blame the I Promise school for failing. They've only been a school for five years. They set their expectations high. And now they're learning as teachers, as people who are in this industry, that Kids don't just go from the bottom to the top like that. It just doesn't happen. Um, it's always years and years of getting them just to get on par with the other students. And it's a struggle. So I would say this. Don't disrespect the I Promise School. But at the same time, the I Promise School, just know that this is not a white supremacy thing. I don't think they're saying that. But just know that it's not a race thing. It's a home life thing. And quit thinking that just because if you take a black kid and put them in a certain situation that they're going to excel. They're still human beings. And that's the thing that bothers me sometimes is that black kids get to get told that pretty much that if they were put in the exact right uh, uh, place that they'll succeed. It's not in, it, it's like they're saying it's not because you're black, but it's because you're black. Kids are kids, human beings. You put any kid in a bad situation, in a bad home life, they're more than likely not going to succeed. OK, so I, I just wish LeBron would just stay off of that and stop making it a black white thing and just focus on treating every kid like they're human and quit making their race the the focal point of the school. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you're a teacher, if you're a tutor, a paraprofessional, or you work with students in any type of way, physical therapy, speech therapy, let me know what you think about the I Promise failing. Have you seen a regression in students over the past two decades that you've been working in this uh, industry or the last decade or the last five years? Let me know. I'm out here. I'm out of here. Goodbye. <laughs>